Hello my roasterellas, it's Carla, and I'm here again in my kitchen today with a recipe that I really hope is gonna come in handy for you this time of year. Today I am making better than a standing rib roast. As you can tell by the recipe name, standing rib roast is not really my first choice. When you slice into it, you kind of just get a big slab of beef with some big pockets of fat, not my favorite eating experience. So I ended up on a New York strip loin. A New York strip loin, in my opinion, is superior because it is beautifully marbled, but it has the kind of fat that is threaded throughout and it melts while it's cooking. It just makes it super juicy. It has a better outside to inside ratio, which I am leaning into hard with a really delicious toasted spice mix that goes on the outside of the roast. And then after you cook it, it is crackly and crunchy and salty. It is also much easier to cook than a standing rib roast. I'm gonna show you with the reverse sear method, how to get a perfect medium rare to rare that is just all one beautiful color from the edge to the center. But wait, there's more. These peppers are also gonna roast in the oven alongside the meat. And then I'm gonna turn them into a really delicious, bright, acidic complement to the meat together. I think they're perfect. And the best part is, if you end up with leftovers, you have the best roast beef that you've ever had at your fingertips. <laughs> Thank you Epicurean for working with me on this episode. Epicurean cutting boards, which is what I am using today, are light, durable, and dishwasher safe. The surface is also really friendly to your knives and is not going to dull them. And the board that I'm using today has just the most fantastic two words that were ever put together, a juice groove which means when you're carving something super juicy, you will keep everything off of your counter, which is great, but you will also collect all of those juices so that you can pour them over your roast afterwards. I also love that these boards are made from a sustainable paper composite material. The Epicurean Gourmet series is available online and in store at Sur La Table. Epicurean offers unique customization options on all their boards via their website, directly. It makes a perfect gift, plus a pretty chic, entertaining touch. When you go to the butcher, don't be intimidated. A strip loin roast is a very common cut of beef. So any butcher anywhere should be able to provide you with this. This one is five to six pounds. I think that that feeds 12 people easily and with leftovers. That's what's going on on the inside. Now let's talk about what is going on on the outside. The best part of a steak is all of the crunchy, salty, caramelized bits around the edge. So I've got four spices. There are a tablespoon of each. We're going fennel, coriander, black peppercorn, and mustard seeds. I like this mix because it's like that sweet fennel, the cool spicy coriander, the kind of high citrusy note of the black pepper, and then a little bit of bitterness from the mustard seed. But this is very customizable um, to you. So if you wanted to include a sweet spice like star anise, if you wanted to sub out coriander for something like juniper. I think that would be really delicious. Do not skip the toasting of the spices. It's really important. Even though they're going to roast in the oven, we need to bring out their flavors before I grind them. So I'm going to toast these seeds over medium heat just until they start crackling and papilling and um, smelling really delicious. Before I grind these, the mixture has to cool down. Otherwise it'll get steamy in the spice grinder. So you don't want that. You could use a mortar and pestle for this step, um, but it's gonna be way faster if you have a mini chop or a spice grinder. I'm gonna do this until it's like a coarse fine. Fresh thyme leaves, I didn't add these from the beginning because they could kind of liquefy. Gorge and perfect but the most important spice of all is salt. For a roast of this size, I'm using the teaspoon of diamond kosher per pound. So this is a six pound roast. I have six teaspoons of salt, that is two tablespoons. Before I put the salt on, I'm gonna score the meat. This is 
going to do a couple of things. It's going to let those spices sort of drop down and get closer to the flesh where you really want to perfume the inside of the meat. The other thing that we're doing by scoring the fatty side is just going to help it render. It's going to give it a really pretty texture at the end. We're going to have more browning. We're going to have more crispy edges, more surface area, more places for salt to like get in there. Um, and get crunchy and delicious. So now I've got going one direction. I'm just gonna turn the roast and go opposite to make like a diamond pattern. Now that the roast is scored, I'll move it onto my board. And I'm gonna season it with salt first. You could mix the salt into the spice, but I like to do the salt as its own step because it is an important step. There's two sides to every story. There's six sides to every strip loin roast. Get all six of them. <laughs> Okay, so now, even if the spice rub seems like it's a lot and you have any hesitations, just wipe those hesitations away. You're gonna use all of the spice rub. This is our crust, this is our outer layer, and don't be shy. So as I go, I'm gonna go gradually and I'm gonna pat it in and I'm gonna make sure to use all of it. Down to the last little bit, just patting on here. So I'm gonna wrap this up in plastic, nice and tight, huck it in the fridge, and talk to it in 48 hours. Magically, I have a roast that was seasoned two days ago, and I'm gonna unwrap it and cook it off. I don't own a roasting pan, so I'm doing mine on a cooling rack set inside of a rimmed baking sheet, but if you have a roasting pan, use that. If you have like a big ceramic dish, you can use that. I'm also positioning it fat side up. So as the fat renders, it's kind of dripping over and basting everything. I want that fat side exposed to the dry heat. It's gonna help with any browning and crisping and rendering. I've also got my red peppers. So the inspiration for the pepper sauce is really taken from a romesco sauce, which is a Spanish sauce with sweet peppers and almonds kind of pounded together. It's, it's kind of like a pesto consistency. I just love slow roasted peppers. I think they get like so sweet and the texture is so silky. So these are just getting olive oil and salt and pepper because they're gonna get turned into a sauce later. So I'm just cooking them simply at the beginning. Choose a dish for the peppers that is nice and snug. I want them to steam each other up and stay juicy and they're gonna shrink as they cook. If you wanted to use a different sweet red pepper, go off of the weight that's on the recipe and just be careful about the cook time because a smaller pepper is gonna cook faster. The oven is at 250, everything is going in. This is incredibly hands off. So the next two and a half, three hours, those things are gonna really just be completely unattended. The peppers and the roast are coming out now. So at this point, the roast can hang out for up to 90 minutes or two hours. The peppers, while they're still hot, I'm gonna transfer into this container. You can just use a bowl and put a plate over it, just you want to put them somewhere where they can steam while they're hot. I'm just gonna steam them until they're cool enough to handle 10 to 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna take off the skins and the core and the seeds. Save all of this delicious pepper cooking liquid. It's gonna go into the sauce and it is um, absolutely delectable. Steamy peppers. These have cooled off enough to peel. They feel so silky and tender. You can just really twist out the stem and most of the seed packet is gonna come out. As far as peeling mm. the skin, it's just that easy. You can just use a knife or your fingers or a paper towel. Just scrape off any seeds that are stuck. And going right into the food processor. If you don't have a food processor, I think you could pulse this in a blender, you want something that's not completely smooth um, and has a little texture left, or you can chop by hand, which is like a little bit time consuming, but not in any way difficult. I'm gonna wait to put all of the cooking juices from the peppers that are in the roasting pan. I will pour off everything that just came out of the peppers while I was cleaning them. You could use your fingers to like hold back the seeds and stuff, but I have a dishwasher, so I'm using my strainer. 
So I'm going to feed the trash bunnies, all the trimmings, and start building the rest of the sauce. So I've got three beautiful anchovies. Salt and funk from the anchovy I think is really important. You could definitely use a few dashes of fish sauce if you wanted to, a dab of colatura. If you don't want to use something fishy, then maybe some Worcester sauce or some soy sauce, something with salt and depth to it. Prepared horseradish, salty, punchy, vinegary, heat, right? We need that to balance sweet, sweet and juicy, hot and spicy, vinegary, sharp, nose tingle, all of that. Also some Aleppo pepper. You can use any mild chili flake that you like. Again, balancing sweetness with something that's gonna register a little bit of tingle, um, wake up your palate a bit. I'm also adding white distilled vinegar, again, for that like top note, the acid, sweet and acid, love each other. They rely on each other, they complement each other. Also some oregano, which is just really delicious with peppers. If you don't wanna bring a second spice into this, you could substitute the oregano with more fresh thyme. Also need some olive oil. Fat is really important to carry flavor. And sometimes something can taste good, but like thin and fat's gonna round out all of the flavors. It's gonna help kind of carry flavor. And there's also in olive oil, some like all the vegetal notes, a little bit of bitterness, like creaminess, all of those things make things more delicious. So the somewhere between a sauce and a relish and a pesto. So it's meant to be poured spooned over the steak and like mingle in with all of your beefy steak juices. Taste. So yeah, try to pulse and not just blend. If you just hit blend on this, you're gonna um, completely puree and liquefy the peppers and you won't have any of that um, silky, delightful texture. Totally needs salt. Has a lot of gravitas to it, but it's also like really sunny. I'm rough chopping the oregano before I add it because I've already pulsed this a couple times and I don't want to over puree, so I'm just giving the oregano a head start. It's about a tablespoon. Mmm. I don't think I need this pepper juice because the texture of this is really nice. However, I would never ever in a thousand years throw that away, so keep your pepper cooking liquid to make like a pepper vinaigrette or to stir into grains while you're cooking them or to dress like a simple piece of fish or if you're making a salsa verde. So the last step of the pepper sauce is in the form of toasted breadcrumbs. I went with panko. I toasted them up with a little bit of olive oil. They're crispy. They're shaggy. They're like nuggety. I'm just super into it. And I also like that they kind of get sogged out. So if you're a fan of the crispy gone soggy, then you're really gonna love this. So I wouldn't put the breadcrumb in too far ahead. This, this is the perfect window, this little half, half hour before you brown the meat, but you're gonna get the contrast of the roasted pepper with these like little bites of breadcrumb and it also will thicken the sauce. It's gonna absorb some of the liquid. The reason why this technique is called reverse sear is because normally with roasts or like the way that everybody did it was sear the meat first to get it brown, then put it in the oven to finish cooking through. Reverse sear is just the reverse. It's already cooked through to perfection, internal temperature. We had total control over that. Now I'm gonna sear it because it's only gonna take a minute or two per side to get the browning and it's not going to screw up the internal temperature of the meat. I'm gonna go into a nice hot pan, a little bit of oil. If you don't have an exhaust, open the window. All right, I 
pulled the roast at 125 originally. That should be perfect for the rare side of medium rare. Now we have this like beautifully burnished, crunchy, crispy outside. I do have a little scoring shrinkage, but that's okay. We're not gonna be hard on ourselves about it and we're gonna be happy for the roast that we have. So I wanna slice this about half an inch. This first slice obviously is the endy. This is a Scooby snack for the person that you love the most in the world. You're gonna save that for that person. Who is it for you? It's me. And the first couple of slices are gonna be a little bit more cooked just cause they're closer to the edge. But as you keep going, we're gonna get to the really gorgeous inner where it's all the same thickness. So just to point out one of the beautiful things about the reverse sear is you don't have a big, dark, well done band of meat, which sometimes can happen if you sear it first and you're spending a lot of time, this whole outer edge will get well done. And then also the internal marbling in the New York strip is so like even and it's so consistent and it's so spread out that you just have really amazingly tender, super juicy meat. Even though these slices are very thin, we're getting really good crust to inside temperature. And I just wanna show you a single slice of the roast is five ounces. So when you order a steak in a restaurant, you're ordering like eight ounces. So one and a half slices of this roast is equivalent to an eight ounce steak because it came from something big worth slicing it really thin you're gonna get edge in every bite. Another thing to notice is because it was reverse seared, the gentle cooking of it means that when you cut into it, you're not gonna have this like gigantic pouring out of all the juices and it had this long rest time. So very little of the juices are ending up on the board, which is great. It means all the juices are in the steak. But if we had to take it to the juice groove, we could. Delightful. A little bit of salt. Red pepper sauce. This feels very festive. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mmm. The crunchy edges and the melty insides and then this like sweet, punchy sauce. And what's funny is I have fantasized about having the alt protein at Christmas or at Thanksgiving or at New Year's and we never make roast beef. So I think I'm just living out my fantasy vacation with this whole concoction and then I'm gonna convince my family that we really need to do it. 100% better than a standing rib roast. I just want to say recipes that tell you that you can dump the toasted spices out on your cutting board and then take a pot and grind them, it really doesn't work. I feel like we, we have said it because we felt like we had to say something to people who didn't have a spice grinder or a mortar and pestle, but it's a really terrible advice, so just don't do it.